Republicans have recently suffered numerous public setbacks, defeats, and concessions, and it's apparently about to get worse because Republican Congressman James Comer sent out an email to his supporters announcing that he is wrapping up his failed sham Biden impeachment inquiry and signaled that there would be no impeachment at all. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, we have several clips to look at in this video, but let's start with the most explosive piece of news first. So fundraising emails went out on behalf of Oversight Chairman James Comer. He is the Grand Inquisitor of the Biden witch hunt, and this is what he had to say. It's clear the Democrats, which, and I'm going to read it like Comer, it's clear the Democrats will choose their party over their country and the truth at every turn they should be ashamed of themselves. That's why I'm preparing criminal referrals as a culmination of my investigation, not an impeachment. Let's be very clear. Preparing criminal referrals. When Donald Trump returns to the White House, it's critical that the new leadership at the Department of Justice have everything they need to prosecute the Biden crime family and deliver swift justice. So not an impeachment, but criminal referrals, which are meaningless because President Biden's Department of Justice will not prosecute or at least are not obligated to prosecute. It's just a recommendation. Folks, this is huge. This is the culmination of James Comer's very long public defeat and humiliation. We've talked about this in previous videos. He actually went on Newsmax and kind of forecast this a few days ago uh, that he would be recommending criminal referrals to the, part the Department of Justice rather than pursue an impeachment vote, which apparently is just destined to fail. More on that later, but here's James Comer kind of teeing this up. We've been, again, referring back and forth to the testimony that we've heard, that we've aired here live on National Report, and again, statements that were made. Um, all this in regards to the impeachment inquiry. I'm curious to know what you say to those that push back and say there's no, there's no appetite in the House and definitely not the Senate for an impeachment. Perhaps there would be criminal referrals moving forward, but then you'd be met with another uh, barrier, if you will, of the statute of limitations, meaning where are you attempting to go at this point, Congressman? Well, I want to hold accountability. Uh, that's what we said all along. We said when we launched the investigation, we want to provide the truth to the American people and then provide real accountability. So what does real accountability look like? Does it look like impeaching Joe Biden in the House and then the Senate tabling it like they're going to do with the Merrick Garland impeachment? Or does it mean providing real criminal referrals to the Department of Justice? Uh, I think the latter. Uh, look, I would vote to impeach Joe Biden right now. Uh, the impeachment inquiry was meant to give us more tools to be able to gather more information to be able to win in court uh, when the Bidens challenged our lawful subpoenas. We've done all that. We've gotten the evidence that the Bidens were influence peddling. They never paid a penny of taxes on it. Joe Biden's lied uh, over a dozen times about his... So you see the cope here. He's like, listen, I mean, impeachment, was that really ever on the table? And but my, besides, I mean, my God, if we're going for accountability, would it really make sense to impeach Joe Biden only for the Senate to acquit him? No, no, no. This impeachment effort was about something else. It was about gathering evidence necessary for criminal referrals, criminal referrals to a Department of Justice that isn't obligated to act on them. See how he's trying to spin it? He's trying to save face when the reality is. James Comer always wanted to try to impeach President Biden. This was not some 40 chess move where it's teeing up these fangless, toothless criminal referrals to a Department of Justice that is probably not going to do anything with them at all and is contingent on Donald Trump winning the 2024 election. And according to recent polling, it's looking less likely. Of course, that may change. But he's so desperate to spin it. And the fact of the matter is that we just don't care. I mean, we care to the extent that Republicans have squandered their majority in the House of Representatives, right? They have not done anything to work bipartisanly in good faith with House Democrats or their counterparts in the Senate, right? Both Senate Democrats and Senate Republicans. They've wasted all this time, effort, and energy on trying to impeach the president. Now Comer's saying we're not going to impeach. And by the way, it was never really about impeaching to begin with. And even on the Fox Propaganda Network, they're just so over it. Even those in the media who think there are troubling and unanswered questions about Joe and Hunter and Jim and other family members and foreign money, 
not giving this hearing a standing ovation? They're really not for two reasons, Hallie. Number one, some of this was well-tread ground. Tony Bobulinski's testimony and information from him has been out there for a while. Mm -hmm. And the, I think the second thing, there was no real moment. I think the AOC uh, clip you played was probably the strongest moment of the weekend. So what that tells you is two things. One, eh, nobody really cares. Does it really move the needle? But I think more importantly, what nobody really cares. And the polling backs this up. Again, as we talked about, we've shown the polling. Relatively few Americans are paying attention to President Biden's impeachment inquiry or the efforts to impeach him compared to the attention that they paid in both impeachment efforts against Donald Trump. And there's considerably less support for impeaching President Biden compared to Donald Trump. So this has just been a defeat every which way to the extent that an increasing number of Republicans are publicly admitting either that they don't have the votes or that there was never the possibility of establishing a direct impeachable offense against President Biden or any sort of direct link between Joe Biden and the so-called influence peddling of his family. Finding links, I got to be honest, Maria, finding links is very difficult because they're, they've lawyered up. They're not participating in, uh, you know, in cooperating in the investigation at all. In fact, Which is, again, weird, right? And doesn't that contradict the, the very thing that James Comer said just a few minutes ago where he said the whole reason why we got the impeachment inquiry was to get the full scope of our investigative authority, and then we can win in court and get those subpoenas and force him to comply. And then James Comer said, we've done that. And now this guy is saying, well, actually, the real reason why we can't establish links is because we're getting our asses kicked in court because we can't compel them to cooperate because they haven't provided the evidence. You see how they're tripping over themselves? Comer saying one thing, that guy saying another, when the reality is they've gotten what they've hundreds of thousands of documents provided by the White House, probably even more when you factor in those that were compelled under subpoena, and they still have nothing. Tim Burchett, who hates President Biden, he's also just publicly throwing in the towel. Let me ask you about the uh, Biden impeachment inquiry. You're on the House uh, Oversight Committee. Uh, yesterday, you told News Nation, quote, we're not going to have the votes. Uh, that's clearly the case. Uh, is the impeachment inquiry over? Should, should, you, should the Republicans give that up? Well, I don't know about uh, the impeachment inquiry. Um, yeah, uh, that's not going to happen. But I wish we would vote on it regardless. Honestly, Jim, you know, you know where I come from, East Tennessee. It's a conservative area. I'm willing to vote on it. I wish these other members would vote on it so they can quit saying up here that they're not for it and then go home and tell all their, their folks at the Reagan Day dinners and Lincoln Day dinners that, you know, that gummit, I'm for impeachment. I'm so Burchett's issue is that, that Republicans, very, several of his peers, are being hypocrites and cowardly about it. They're saying one thing to their constituents, other things to their peers in Congress, probably a third thing uh, on conservative media, a fourth thing in liberal media, and so on and so forth. He wants them to put their money where their mouths are, right, so to speak, which, by the way, I, part of me would want that too, just to see these Republicans actually have to finally bite the proverbial bullet. If you really believe impeachment's a thing, go ahead and vote for it. This is what Democratic freshman Congressman Jared Moskowitz has been repeatedly taunting James Comer to do. Hey, you think this is so obviously impeachable? If you think you've done your job so well, call a vote. You have the majority, call a vote. But it's looking increasingly unlikely as to basically be impossible that they would have the votes to even impeach, right? They have effectively a one-seat majority. There are 18 Republicans sitting in Biden districts whose constituents will be furious if they try to impeach the president without airtight and conclusive evidence of an impeachable offense, which they clearly don't have. And yeah, and that's why you have James Comer telling his fundraisers, those he's trying to get money from, that, hey, listen, we're wrapping this thing up, you know, and we're going to recommend criminal referrals. And that's why we got to get Trump elected so we can punish and prosecute the Biden crime family. And presumably, if that's the case, by his estimation, Joe Biden, which is weird because I thought, thought we're not supposed to prosecute former presidents. But actually, I guess it's okay if Republicans do. I mean, Donald Trump, you know, repeatedly talked about prosecuting President Obama when he was in office. He publicly called on his attorney general, Bill Barr, to do just that. So that's how it works. James Comer and the Republicans say that Democrats can't prosecute former presidents, but Republicans can all the time. But obviously, this is a tacit admission that the impeachment effort has failed. It's not going to proceed. Now they're just going to try to cobble together some sort of sham symbolic a gesture towards a sham failed impeachment inquiry and see what they can do with it. And then they're going to milk it for all it's worth. But this deserves nothing but our contempt and disdain. And so do they. So do those elected Republicans for wasting so much time, effort, and energy when their constituents, their voters, and the American people in general needed them to get their act together, and they chose not to.
Let me know what you think in the comments.